Welcome to Highline Excel 2013, video number 16. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Business 214, week 3, click on the link below the video. Hey, I'm on the sheet round, and we got to talk about rounding. It seems so basic, and yet many spreadsheet errors come from not rounding when you should. Hey, let's look at an example here. We have some taxable earnings and a tax rate. I'm going to create a formula equals one cell to my left times the tax rate, F4 to lock it, control enter, copy it down. Click in the last cell, alt equals, and I add it up. And of course your boss comes in, looks over your shoulder and goes, obviously you don't know how to use Excel. And you're like, well, of course I do. And she's like, well, 14396 plus 7449 does not equal 21846. And you're like, what? and she grabs the mouse from you and she types 143 notice she's typing and then 74.49 and then she says well that was pretty cool I didn't know about the keyboard so that'll save you alt equals so she learns that and she says boom there it is 218.45 so if you don't know how to round when you're supposed to then you get into this trouble because that's the right answer if you highlight this Control F1 to toggle open the ribbons and increase your decimals. There are some extra decimals that 4 and the 3 are hanging out. Even though we decreased the decimals using these buttons, that is number formatting only. It's a facade that sits on the surface of the spreadsheet. Those little numbers are still in the cell and the sum function sees them. It gets a 7 there. So it looks like there's 46. All right, now I'm going to increase this back up here just so when we fix it, we'll see that there is, there's proof there that we fixed it. Now, the rule I use is if I'm multiplying or dividing decimals and I'm going to use the result of a formula in subsequent formulas like this sum function, then I use the round function. So in general, uh, if I'm multiplying or dividing decimals in the formula result, will be used in subsequent formulas. That's when I use round. Here we go. F2, round. And you got to remember there's a convention because the trick is you got to tell the round function which position to round to. The way I remember it is pennies, right? I'm looking at the decimal. One, two, since 2 is the penny position, I memorize that. If I wanted to go any further to the right, 10, 100, thousandths, so the thousandths would be a 3. Any further out, 4, 5, etc. To the penny is 2, to the tenth is 1, so that would mean to the integer or the dollar like in income taxes on your federal income tax, that's 0. If you wanted to go further to the left, the tens position would be minus one, the hundreds would be minus two, and then the thousand sometimes for financial statements you go to the uh, minus three. But here we're going to the penny. And I'm going to drag it down and sure enough that hacks off those extra pennies and we get the correct answer. Now we can decrease the decimals. Alright, let's scroll down here to the penny, I'm using a 2. To the dollar, like in income taxes, I'm using a 0. To the thousands position, I'm using a minus 3. There we go. So those, that's the straight round function. That's traditional round function. By the way, there's something called banker's rounding. Um, and if you search YouTube, uh, my channel, I have a video on that. There's actually two videos at least. There's other types of rounding. Sometimes you're doing the normal rounding. Sometimes you always want to round up or always want to round down. So the round to the zero, this would be to 101, right? So we're using the normal round rule. If this was 5 or more, or 50, 51, 52, then it would, the rounding rule to the integer or to the dollar would go up. Now, rounding up, 
Notice here we had to get the, the 50, 51, or up to go up. But you can just always round up. So anything past 101 will round up. I'm going to go comma 0. So 2, even if this was 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, right? It's still rounding. That's rounding up. Rounding down, same idea, except for you're always rounding down. So if I say to the integer, even 10190, oh, whoops, I forgot the D for round down. So round down, and that will go down. No matter what it is, 0001, oh, 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 it's always going down. Now there are some other types of rounding. For example, for pricing. M round will use a regular rounding rule, but it will round not to a digit, but to an amount. So here I have tens over here. For these ones, we're going to say round to the nearest ten dollars. And it's M round. It's not to a digit. If you're not picking a position, hey, just tell it the amount. So right here, 104, we're going we're rounding to the nearest 10 bucks, so it's down to 100. Right up to the uh, 105, still 100. Once it hits 105 or above, it's going up to the nearest 10. Here, I'm not. I don't know why I put this over here. I mean, this would, 106 would go up too. Ceiling is the concept of rounding to a multiple, but this is going to always go up this is always going to go down. So equal ceiling. And there's a new ceiling math in 2010. I'm going to use the old ceiling. Ceiling.math treats numbers less than 0, different than above 0. Or you have the choice of how to round away from 0 or towards 0. I'm going to just use ceiling. This is just like this M round, except for it's always going up. So this is always going up to the next 10. Right? So even though it's 101, M round would have rounded to the nearest 10, so it would have been 100. But 101, anything before we get to town, to, to right below 10. So if this was 109.99999, it's still 10. As soon as it gets one teeny little bit over, then it's going up to 20. Floor, same thing, except for it's going down. So floor to the nearest 10, always going down. So when it's always going down. All right, so floor, ceiling, M round, those are for multiples, rounding to the nearest multiple. Round, round up, round down, those will go to a specific digit. Two goes to the penny, zero goes to the dollar. Any minuses go to the left of the ones position. All right, and you gotta you gotta round if you want to have your invoices and payroll calculations correct in Excel. All right, we'll see you next video.